We're going to take you on a lovely hike along the beautiful shores of the northwest coast of Italy in the Cinque Terre area. We're going on what is probably the most popular hike from the village of Monte Rosso to Vernazza. The hike begins right at the beach of Monte Rosso. It's a very easy start. You go up this gradual incline on a concrete ramp. It takes about two hours around a bend past a restaurant and then right away you're climbing some steps and on your way on this hike. And you go uphill and then you're fairly level for quite a while and then you go back downhill. So it, it really is not a difficult hike, but it does require some stamina. You're walking for two hours. The hike is going to take you past a lot of vineyards. They grow grapes up here for primarily for white wine of the Cinque Terre region. And there's some olive trees and some other miscellaneous plants and beautiful trees and the sound of birds chirping in the background. So this is very much a nature hike. Cinque Terre is a national park and there is a slight admission fee to come in and hike. You can buy a day car that will also cover some train trips in between. So it's well worth it and the money goes towards protecting the area. This hiking trail is quite safe. There is really no steep drop-offs and it's wide enough that two people can pass, although sometimes you've got to squeeze by each other. But it's safe. You're not going to get into any trouble here if you take the normal precautions. You want to be sure to bring along sufficient drinking water. There's no water available during the length of the trail, so bring your own bottled water. You want to have a nice hat, maybe some sunscreen, perhaps bring along a little snack, some fruit or a picnic. You can sit at one of the benches and have a sandwich, enjoy the view, at least an energy bar, some kind of food because there's no other options up here along the trail. And have good shoes on because this is a pretty serious hike. You don't want to do it in rubber slippers. You want to at least have good walking shoes or good sandals, something that will get you by. As we walk along, we're going to show you some multi-screen videos too for your further entertainment and enjoyment. When you're in a place, you're looking all around as you go, looking left, looking right, up and down. And that's the feeling that we're trying to share with you with a couple of video screens and a couple of small still photographs. Some of the photographs show the villages along the way. If our multi-image screen is too much for you, stick around because in the second half of the program, we will present the hike again on a single screen only. Well, of course, you're going to get splendid views all around as you walk along. There's great views down at the coastline. You can see the vineyards you're passing by. There's occasional little streams that you walk over and you'll run into a few other people along the way. It's a fairly popular hiking trail, especially in the summer season, but mostly it's the vistas that are the real payoff on this hike. It's not extremely difficult by any means. Anybody in reasonable condition can do it, but it'll take you two hours and you do go uphill and you go downhill and you're walking along a dirt trail for most of it. So be careful and be advised that this will require some effort on your part, but a tremendous amount of rewards in return. It's a peaceful and refreshing nature stroll. It really doesn't get much better than this. It's a decent walk. You can manage it, no problem. Probably the biggest thrill of the entire hike is the view that you're gonna get from one particular spot, looking down at Vernazza a cozy little seaside harbor village. It's just amazing. <laughs> Another nice aspect of that view is the trail will now start going downhill heading into Vernazza village itself. So it becomes much easier to do the walk. This really is one of the most popular hikes in all of Italy. So if it's in the summertime, you can expect a small crowd on the trail but in the off season, really not so crowded. It's so popular that, for example, 
on TripAdvisor, as of today, there are 576 reviews just about this one hike and some other discussion of other hikes along the Cinque Terre coast, but particularly the footpath between Monte Rosso and Vernazza, TripAdvisor. And of the nearly 600 reviews, 400 said it was an excellent experience. 140 people said it was very good. So that's just about everybody. 20 people said it was only average. And nobody said that it was poor or terrible. So that gives you some idea of the value and popularity of this wonderful hike. If you're doing this hike in the summertime, it can get quite hot, especially if you're unfortunate enough to be doing it in midday or in the early afternoon. It can be very hot, very sunny. But if you're in the off season, the chances are it'll be very pleasant temperature. If you're in the summer, try take the hike in the morning, first thing. It's out of this world with these pastel colored buildings beautifully wrapped around the only natural harbor in all of Cinque Terre. A tiny, picturesque village nestled on a rocky seaside outcrop. A cozy, boat-filled harbor lapping at the town's central square. And at the end of the hike, what better way to celebrate than a nice meal at an outdoor restaurant, a bottle of wine, outdoor music, in this picture-perfect setting. Well, now that we've finished presenting the hike to you with our multi-screen approach, we're gonna show it to you again, this time just on one screen, so that you can perhaps pay uh, closer attention to the trail itself. It's the same hike we're starting out once again from Monte Rosso and hiking on to Vernazza with new narration and added practical information. Just to recap and summarize the difficulty of the trail, it's really quite level for most of the two hours. It's just at either end that you've got some steps, some staircases. The staircases could pose a challenge for some people because it's the equivalent of walking up nearly 700 feet. So it's spread out over time, of course. There's a series of staircases with many steps but it is the equivalent of perhaps climbing up a 50-story high-rise building. So beware, you can do it. It's not all that hard and you've got spectacular scenery to help you along the way. And it's not happening all at once. It's done in increments, in stages. So don't be wary. This is a hike that anybody can do if they're in reasonable shape. How many steps are there in the staircases? Well, one hiker counted 700 steps at the Monte Rosso end of the trail to get from the beach up to the level part of the trail. So it is a bit of a climb. Well, another hiker's aid that you might consider if you're a marginal walker or just need a little bit of help is a hiking pole or a hiking stick. They're available for sale in the shops. They cost about 10 euros, say about $15. And that can be very helpful, especially when you're navigating uphill and downhill. Well, a couple of notes on the length of this hike. If you were really in a rush, you could actually do it in 75 minutes. Just walk, walk, walk without hardly stopping to take a break to even look around. But of course, you don't want to do that. You're doing the hike to enjoy the views, to stop, to take some pictures. So on average, it's about two hours hike. But really, if you'd like to get that much more out of it, stopping and really scanning and gazing and observing carefully the view, the details, the trees, the different colorations, listening to the birds, watching other hikers go by, sitting down and just taking it easy, it would be three hours. That would be a very comfortable length of time for the trail in which you would really get the most out of it. If you'd like to keep going after you've finished the trail from Monte Rosso to Vernazza, there are continuations. You can walk the next leg, which is from Vernazza to Cornelia, 
that's about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, depending on your speed. And you go up to the hilltop village of Cornelia, the only one of the five villages that does not have direct access to the sea. And when you're finished with that leg, you can keep walking from Cornelia on to the next village, heading south to Monarola. That's a slightly shorter hike. It takes an hour and 15 minutes approximately. And pretty easy. It's mostly downhill from Cornelia to Monarola. The final leg of this trail system goes from Monarola to Rio Maggiore. It's called the Via Amore. It's quite level and takes just about half an hour. You can download a hiking map showing these routes from the official website of the National Park. Go to Parco Nazionale 5 terreit and there you'll find various information about the hiking trails and conditions. With its national park status and funding, there's been a lot of work over the years of reconstructing and stabilizing the stone walls, involving a lot of volunteer effort as well from students at the universities in the region of Italy. It's the smallest national park in Italy, just 4,300 acres, and yet it's the most densely populated with 5,000 residents. This landscape was built up by farmers, men and women, working hard over thousands of years, building dry masonry walls to form the terraces without using any mortar. There's a huge volume, they estimate 8 million cubic meters of dry stone walls were constructed here. One of various reasons that it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. You could get to this hike even if you were staying in Florence overnight or staying in Pisa or maybe Lucca. You can take a train and get over to this area, but it's much better to stay in the Cinque Terre area. Or you could stay in the nearby town of Santa Margarita Ligure, which has quite a few hotels available for you. In Cinque Terre area, you'll find that Monte Rosso is the largest of the towns, and they've got about 20 hotels and guest houses, bed and breakfast, so there's a lot of choices in Monte Rosso. And even in the little villages, such as Vernazza, there are some tiny hotels and other guest accommodations to pick from. So it makes a great base to be staying right in the Cinque Terre area. That way you can be sure to do more than just the one hike. If you're really a hiking adventurer and you want more of a challenge, there's a high trail further up the slope. And that goes as high up as 800 meters above sea level. So that's quite a climb. And it goes all the way from Levanto to Porto Venere, but it's going to take you 12 hours to do it. So be advised. That would be too much for one day's hike. So you want to break that up into at least a couple of days walking. We're showing you the hiking trail in the direction of starting from Monte Rosso and going to Vernazza. Of course, you could do it in the opposite direction. You can take the train or a boat down to Vernazza and then hike from there back north to Monte Rosso. It's really about the same difference either way. Perhaps there's a small difference in the staircases. Some people feel that it's better to start at Vernazza because the staircases coming up out of Vernazza are a little bit more irregular and it's easier to walk them going uphill, whereas the staircases connecting from the trail down into Monte Rosso are wide and level, broad concrete steps, and those are easy to walk on going down. So that's one argument for perhaps starting in Vernazza, but it really just depends on your schedule and your preference. One of the beautiful things about starting in Monte Rosso and ending up in Vernazza is that you build up to the crescendo of the beautiful view looking down into Vernazza town. There will be frequent glimpses of Vernazza off in the distance, jutting out on its small peninsula. And then as you get closer, there will be one special viewpoint that makes this entire journey on foot worthwhile as you stand on a ledge looking straight down into the pastel-colored village wrapped around its tiny harbor. 
And then as you get closer to Vernazza, it's a special treat to be walking alongside the stream. There's a beautiful sidewalk and lush plantings, and it's very much a rich and natural scene to enjoy. Well, you're almost down now. In only a few minutes, you're going to be reaching the bottom, the flat level lands, relatively level village of Vernazza. And there you can have another great time exploring the town. We'll be showing you a lot more of the town of Vernazza in a later episode, but for now it's just time to celebrate the end of the walk. Vernazza is a good place because it has remained like it was during the old, old period, the ancient period. These villages all had a good past during the Republic of Genoa because they are situated in a strategic zone like a guarded area. So Genoa protected the villages, keeping the pirates away. And then finally, ending up perhaps at a nice little restaurant down at the bottom in Vernazza. It's all downhill from there, so you can soon be sitting at a table by the sea and enjoying your reward. A fabulous meal that tastes at least twice as good as it should, enhanced by your accomplishments and the picture book setting with a spectacular view all around.